What would you do if you no longer felt sick and tired? What if you woke up every day feeling amazing in your body and in your life? How would your life be different? You and your body are capable of incredible things. You have the power to heal. You just need the right tools and support. If you're ready to heal your body and feel amazing, tune into the Heal Your Body Show with host, integrative medicine practitioner, Jamie Gilliam. Oh, welcome, 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 everyone. I am not Jamie Gilliam. I am Christine McIver. I am the CEO of the Inspired Choices Network, and it is my honor and privilege to introduce Jamie to our platform. Welcome, Jamie. We are so thrilled to have you and your expertise here on the network. I'm thrilled to be here too. I'm so excited uh, <laughs> just to be able to share and learn with everybody and help people heal and just feel amazing. Oh, this is this is excellent. I know you've got so, so much to share. And I know that you've got a big following of people that you've been educating. And now you're going to bring your your voice and your expertise to the airwaves globally. So this is so exciting. We've got so much to share today. Today's episode is called How Cancer Led Me to Healing. But before we jump into that, Jamie, I am going to read your professional bio. Because I really want to get a sense for everybody to get a sense of who you are and kind of, you know, where you came from, where all this stuff came from with you. So Jamie Gilliam is the founder of JG Wellness Clinic, where she specializes in addressing various health concerns with a focus on thyroid disorders, hormonal imbalances, and the endocrine system, autoimmune diseases, and assisting patients striving to achieve weight loss goals. Jamie is a board certified is board certified in holistic and integrative medicine and holds an MS in exercise science. Didn't even know that existed. <laughs> Jamie is also a devoted mother to seven children. Holy mackerel. Jamie's personal health challenges with thyroid cancer, cervical cancer, hypothyroidism, Hashimoto's disease, and lupus caused her to realize that the conventional healthcare system is flawed. Tired of being sick and tired, she decided to navigate a different path. In her pursuit of better health, she explored alternative approaches to healthcare that emphasized healing rather than merely treating symptoms. Her dissatisfaction with the status quo led her to the decision to further her education and pursue a career in integrative medicine. The choice was rooted in her realization that many individuals are dealing with health issues that are not receiving the level of care and attention they need with the traditional healthcare system. Through her work at G JG Wellness Clinic, Jamie is dedicated to treating the whole person. She gives patients a voice and ensures patients are heard. She offers patients a comprehensive and personalized approach to healthcare, and Jamie encourages her patients to play an active role in their healthcare decisions. Now, you can find Jamie at jgwellnessclinic.com, very, very simply. Jamie, you know... You were a guest on Lizzie Ann's show, I'm Not Fine. And that was the first time that you and I met. And I've got to tell you that listening to your journey, I, my jaw pretty much dropped throughout the entire episode, hearing about your journey and everything that you have moved through and beyond. It's, it's really shocking to see and hear you talk about all of these different challenges. And I was thinking about you today before the show, and I thought, I don't know that I would have wanted to dive down this road, this deep road that you have divin divin down, dive down, <laughs> dove down. Uh, I think I would have wanted to run away. I would have wanted to get myself healthy and then kind of run away from the whole bit. What had you really dive into this? Like, I, I know that you want to, you've learned a lot probably through all of these, but what had you go into this in a service capacity? So when I was first diagnosed with thyroid cancer, um, it was after my mother had passed away from colorectal cancer and we took care of her as she slowly declined and she didn't want to do chemo anymore. She was tired. 
And I remember sitting in my car thinking, this is it for me. Because at the time, I didn't know much about thyroid cancer. They just told me I had cancer. I didn't know what the road ahead was going to look like. And I sat thinking, this is it. And thought, what have I done with my life? And I'm going to miss my kids growing up and having children and getting married or whatever their future holds for them. And I realized in that moment that none of us are getting out of here alive. And we put it on the back burner. Nobody really thinks about it. And it's not something that we should think about daily, but we do need to recognize that we're here for a very short time. And and we all want to feel good and we want to have joy and we want to have an amazing life. And I recognized in that moment that I had to do whatever I could to enjoy the rest of the time that I have here. And it was a, a mind shift. I could get better or I could get better. And I chose to get better. And as I began to help myself, I recognized that so many people, men and women, but especially women, because endocrine problems and autoimmune diseases mostly affect women, we are not getting proper care in conventional medicine. We are not being heard. And I recognize that I had to use my journey and my struggle to be able to help other people going through the same circumstances, because I know what it feels like to get a diagnosis where you don't know what the future holds. And I know what it's like to feel like crap and nobody's listening. Nobody understands. Wow. That's, that's huge. And I'm sorry for the loss of your mother, but what, what a beautiful contribution she has been to you in, in creating better choices for other people in, in your, her journey and in yours. So today's show, how cancer led me to healing. So why don't you start us down that path around where this all began for you in your personal health journey? Well, I was fine, <laughs> just like everybody else cruising through life. My husband and I owned a gym and we had uh, two more little boys after we opened the gym. And, you know, we were just living our day-to-day -day lives. And I kept going to doctors saying something's wrong. I was choking on food and it was uh, random. I would choke on food and I was having trouble swallowing. I couldn't catch my breath. I'd wake up in the middle of the night feeling like I was choking and I was having neck pain, ear pain, jaw pain, and the pain would splay up into my face and ear like the branches of a tree. And my eardrum kept rupturing and I was having facial spasms on the right side of my face. And they kept telling me I had anxiety and that I was having panic attacks when I was choking on food and waking up in the middle of the night choking. And I kept going back. They kept telling me my labs are normal. And then one doctor said, maybe it's a neck strain because they knew I worked out a lot. And then he said, maybe it's a vocal cord strain, but they weren't doing anything to just look in my neck. And they told me maybe it's reflux. So I finally found a new doctor. She was very new, very young. And I said, please just look in my neck. I know there's something in my neck. She said the same thing. Your labs are normal. No further testing needed. Come on. And she sent me for an ultrasound and called within 20 minutes. I wasn't even home yet. And she said, I'm 99% certain you have thyroid cancer. And those cancerous nodules were pressing on everything in my neck, causing all of my symptoms. And the side note is thyroid cancer does not show up in lab work. Sometimes your thyroid globulin will be high, but they only detect it through ultrasound and then a fine needle biopsy. Okay. I, I just want to scream. Like how could people just keep saying that and saying you have anxiety when you can't swallow? Like, is, is that really something that somebody has anxiety and they can't swallow, or are they just making that shit up? 
It's true. It can be a symptom of panic attacks and anxiety, but many people are gaslit by conventional medicine and are told their symptoms are anxiety or it's all in their head, it's depression, all of your labs are normal, but they're also not running complete labs and they're not doing further diagnostic testing and investigation if a patient says, hey, this is not what's wrong with me. I know my body, something's wrong. They just let it go at it's anxiety or it's in your head. Wow. That, that is crazy. So is this, is this more common than most people realize? Thyroid cancer, it's actually not as common as people uh, would think. I mean, I work a lot with thyroid cancer survivors, so I talk with a lot of cancer patients, but it's actually more common to have benign thyroid nodules, which can still interfere uh, with your day-to-day -day life because they can press on everything in the neck. There's a lot surrounding the thyroid. Uh, but thyroid cancer is quite rare. I'm not really sure the statistics off the top of my head, but. Okay. So, so what was your next step after this? So you, you got diagnosed, what happened then? So they scheduled me for a fine needle biopsy and that confirmed cancer. I had a thyroidectomy and then I was put on levothyroxine for hypothyroidism okay. because Okay, wait, go back. Cause you, you say things so fast. I'm like, wait, what is that? So you said they, they, um, scheduled a, a thyroid needle something. It's called a fine needle biopsy. They fine take needle. a specimen from the neck and they biopsy it to determine if the nodules are cancerous and they're not always conclusive. And that's something important to understand if nodules look suspicious a fine needle biopsy can confirm cancer, but it's not 100% conclusive when it comes back as negative for cancer because they have to extract the cancer, right, to biopsy it. Okay. And then they scheduled me for a thyroidectomy. Uh, within two weeks, I was in the operating room. And thyroidectomies automatically will cause hypothyroidism because your thyroid regulates metabolism. So they put me on levothyroxine and that is where I also recognize there's a lack of treatment for hypothyroidism in conventional medicine, also hyperthyroidism, but I was under medicated. So I was steadily gaining weight. I couldn't remember things. I was throwing tantrums like a toddler because I was stressed and you need thyroid hormone for your cognitive function. And I was just having a lot of other symptoms that just made me feel like crap. And I remember sitting on the side of my bed one morning thinking, is this going to be the rest of my life? Because I don't want to live like this. It was terrible. Oh, wow. Okay. There is so much that I want to learn about this. Like they, when they actually t put you under the needle, then that triggered a health problem. No. So the fine needle biopsy confirmed cancer. And right. then because of that confirmation, I had my thyroid and the cancer removed. Okay. And then when they removed that, then they put you on this medicine. Yes. But it wasn't I'm enough. Thyroid hormone. Yes. So it wasn't enough. And that meant my metabolism was extremely slow and people think of metabolism, typically they think of it when we talk about weight and it does play a big role in weight management because, you know, basically in, in short, our body takes the energy, which are calories from proteins, fats, and carbohydrates and converts it into energy for our body, for all of our bodily functions and processes. So if you're dealing with hypothyroidism and a lack of thyroid hormone, your metabolism is going to be slow. So everything within the body slows down. So basically have the metabolism like a turtle and that will cause every bodily function and process to be affected. Holy crap. Oh my God. Well, I I'm so glad you're on the other side of this, but I really, I do want to keep talking about this. We are up to our first commercial break though. So if you are listening live and you have questions that you would like to ask Jamie, please join us at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com forward slash chat room, where we'll be able to answer your questions or you can just make comments. And, you know, of course, if you are listening to the replay on any of our 
300 plus platforms do make a comment and Jamie will be seeing those and she can be responding to those as well. Jamie, I'm thrilled to hear more. Um, I'm shocked by everything you've told me so far, but I'm glad that you have the knowledge to educate more and more of us um, with what you're going to be sharing today and into the future. So stick around, everyone. You are listening to Heal Your Body with our host, Jamie Gilliam. I'm your interviewer today, Christine McIver, here on the Inspired Choices Network. Don't go anywhere. We'll be back in just a couple of minutes with more all about how cancer led me to healing. Healing your body goes beyond simply taking medication to alleviate symptoms. While medications have their place in healthcare and can be essential in managing certain conditions, healing involves total body care. While not all health conditions can be healed, symptoms can be managed with the right approach. Integrative medicine considers not only the physical body, but also your mind and soul. Instead of just surviving, why not feel amazing and actually thrive? Integrative medicine practitioner Jamie Gilliam empowers you with tools to do just that. Tune into the Heal Your Body show Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Are you a subject matter expert? Are you here to share your expertise with an audience waiting to hear from you in only the way you can deliver? Are you ready to have your voice amplified across the airwaves? Inspired Choices Network has a global radio platform streaming to millions of people across the world. Professionally produced and supported by an accomplished team every step of the way, you can broadcast from anywhere in the world knowing your voice matters and we ensure it is delivered with ease and efficiency. Eager to hear your message, the world awaits. Contact us today to become an Inspired Choices Network radio host. Email become a host at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. This is the Heal Your Body Show with Jamie Gilliam. To participate in this program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to jamie at jgwellnessclinic.com. Now back to the program. Welcome back, everyone. I am not Jamie. I am Christine McIver. I am here with our host, Jamie Gilliam. And today we're talking about how cancer led me to healing. Um, I love what you said in the write-up of the show, and I'm just going to review that right now and jump back into where we were talking. I was cruising through life, and then suddenly I had thyroid cancer. As I began healing from surgery and adjusting to a new life with hydro hypothyroidism due to my thyroidectomy, another blow came, a diagnosis of cervical cancer. My first thought was, I don't have time for this. My second thought was, I'm going to die and miss seeing my kids grow up. Fortunately, I'm here today and my life has completely changed. Cancer led me to healing. Cancer became my teacher guiding me down a path of self-discovery I never anticipated. It has taught me so much about myself, my body, my life. I've realized that healing is about so much more than what's on your plate. I love that. How often you go to the gym or supplements you take. True healing encompasses your entire being and begins with loving yourself respecting yourself and knowing that you are worth your best effort. On the Heal Your Body show today, Jamie is going to be integrative medicine practitioner, and she will equip us with valuable tools for our own personal healing journey. Wow, that is powerful, Jamie. Like it is, it's, it's kind of mind blowing to hear what you have come through, as I said before, but it's also really mind blowing of how much you have expanded your knowledge base and empowered yourself to get on the, I mean, what a gift you were to your family in, in taking a hold of this. And I can't imagine having come through the first cancer and then you end up with cervical cancer. What was the window between that? Like, was it a few years or? It was about four months. Holy mackerel. So were you cleared of the thyroid cancer before that one came in? 
So typically with thyroidectomies, when they remove your thyroid and the cancer, sometimes they have to remove lymph nodes, uh, do a neck dissection as well. Some people have to do RAI. Uh, I was fine after my thyroidectomy. I was clear and I chose not to do RAI. Uh, there was a difference of opinion between my uh, hematologist and my surgeon and my endocrinologist. If I needed it, I chose not to. And then I was diagnosed with cervical cancer and I chose to take a holistic approach. I was diagnosed with stage 1B2 and a friend called me and said, hey, I want you to try this holistic protocol before you do anything. I thought she was nuts. <laughs> I, I really just thought she was a, a wackadoodle, but I didn't want to go through another surgery. I didn't want to be um, in bed and recovering for six to eight weeks or longer. And I was feeling, you know, already crappy from my thyroidectomy. So I decided to do the holistic protocol and went back in six months and was given an NED status, no disease detected. And uh, now I go every six months for recurrence checks for my thyroid cancer and my cervical cancer. But that's really what opened up the gates to there is so much more to this. And I recognize that you know, we we grow up being taught to trust doctors. And there are some fabulous doctors in conventional medicine. But typically the symptom is treated or the diagnosis is treated, not the body as a whole. And I recognize that there were a lot of problems within my lab work. I also have genetic factors. I have MTHFR and COMPT. Those are genetic factors that can play a role in the development of disease. And, and many people have genetic factors that predispose them to developing certain diseases. And there's things we can do in many cases to try to uh, avoid um, the increased risk of developing certain diseases. In some cases you cannot, but in my case, I chose uh, a holistic approach and that also included trauma healing and also managing stress because I didn't recognize that I had trauma. It was just normal for me. And I had a dysregulated nervous system. I lived in constant chaos. And that was a big driver to the stress within my body and why I, I was struggling with some of the things I was struggling with. Because cervical cancer is caused by persistent HPV. Most people get HPV. There are high risk strains. Most people clear it. They never know they have it, meaning it goes dormant in the body. Those of us that get persistent HPV, it's an immune problem. Our immune systems cannot clear it and we can go on to develop certain HPV related cancers. So my body just could not fight off the HPV. So what is HP? You're going to have to educate us more. What is HPV? So HPV is human papillomavirus, and there are uh, more than 100 strains of HPV, and some cause warts on the body, uh, and then there's also uh, HPV 6 and 11, which cause genital warts, and then there are also high-risk strains that are carcinogenic. So they can lead to cervical cancer, penile cancer, anal cancer, vulva, vaginal throat and tongue cancer. And the biggest problem with HPV is there's no routine testing for men. So men never know that they have it. And women only know that they've had it if they test during an active infection. Holy crap. We are so blind. We're so blind to this. And, you know, I agree with you that there are some fabulous doctors who, out there who are more than willing to take into consideration things beyond their knowledge scope. And yet it seems like there are the, we have a medical system that really feels like they are they are superior to everything. And yet it's obvious, certainly from what you've gone through, that there's way more that needs to be done and way more that support that people need to have. Now, 
I, I mean, I don't know you that well, Jamie, but I don't think you're a fear mongering. You run around screaming from the rooftop. But how do we get or how do you get this knowledge out to people without them going into a big fear space? Well, it, it's just about empowering yourself with knowledge. And that's what I try to do with my patients. I teach them. I provide a health library and learning modules so that they can learn more about their bodies, about lab work that is necessary, how to read their own lab work, which they don't have to understand it on a deep level, uh, but they can understand the basic ranges and where their levels should be. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's really understanding all of the things that you can do to advocate for yourself. And then also all the things you can do in your life to be able to self heal. And many people, I will tell you this because this is something that I recognized with myself. And I recognize it a lot with a lot of patients I work with when they are just struggling so much with their health. They, they feel like crap. And, and that also will drive anxiety and depression mm -hmm. because they don't feel good. So if you don't feel good, it makes you more anxious to go out and do things and it can make you very depressed, right? But the problem is not in your brain, the problem is with what's going on in the body. And many of us walk around disconnected from ourselves and from our bodies and from everyone around us. We just go through the motions and many people don't know what they're passionate about. They don't know what makes them happy. They don't know what their true talents are. They don't know who they are because they've been told their entire lives who to be, and they've tried to fit this mold. So some people, if you ask them, what are you passionate about? They don't know. And one of the things that is so simple to do is just start spending five minutes a day with yourself in the peace and quiet. Start asking yourself questions. Like if you wanted to date somebody, right, what questions would you ask them? And then as you get through the basics, you can dive deeper into shame, guilt, embarrassment, uh, forgiveness for yourself and others, all of the things that are buried, because when you have trauma, you're disconnected. Uh, it's a coping mechanism. And many people live in constant chaos because it's a coping mechanism. And you operate from that place of trauma, and it affects every aspect of your life. So how can you dive deeper into that piece? How does the, the trauma and the chaos physically impact our bodies as it did in your case? It's stress. So many diseases stem from constant stress, physical, emotional, mental, spiritual stress. And your body is an integrated unit. So when you go to a conventional medicine doctor, typically they'll refer you to like five different specialists based on what you need. And they break the body apart and look at it in pieces based on what they specialize in. And then they're not discussing things with each other. They're not reading each other's notes. And so there's a huge disconnect. Your body is a machine, right? It is an integrated unit. There are 12 body systems. Some people say 11, uh, but overall there's 12. And your nervous system is connected to everything within the body. And if somebody has a dysregulated nervous system, it's going to impact everything else. And the way that it works is if you have a problem within one body system, it will cause a dominant no effect of problems throughout the body because they all work independently, but then they work together as well for your body to function. Holy crap. <laughs> I mean, how many times am I going to say this today? <laughs> this is like, wow, you're really blowing my mind. The, my next question, but we have to go to break, but, I, but when we come back, I want you to explain a little bit more about the 12 different body systems, because that's not something that certainly I've ever been educated on. I think I have a, an idea of a few, but I think for our listener, it would be really great to kind of lay that out for, so we can understand that a little bit more clearly and how much all of this does impact our health and and how important it is for us to 
see us as a whole system, not as the pieces and parts that unfortunately modern medicine puts us into. So don't go away, everybody. We have got more with Heal Your Body with Jamie Gilliam. She is uh, she's knocking it out of the park. We're already halfway through this show. Holy moly. <laughs> okay, everybody stick around. We will be right back after this commercial Healing break. Healing Your Body goes beyond simply taking medication to alleviate symptoms. While medications have their place in healthcare and can be essential in managing certain conditions, healing involves total body care. While not all health conditions can be healed, symptoms can be managed with the right approach. Integrative medicine considers not only the physical body, but also your mind and soul. Instead of just surviving, why not feel amazing and actually thrive? Integrative medicine practitioner, Jamie Gilliam, empowers you with tools to do just that. Tune into the Heal Your Body Show, Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. How wonderful would it be to carry your favorite Inspired Choices Network host with you throughout your day? Well, now you can. Inspired Choices Network now has its very own mobile app. Our free app offers live streaming shows along with thousands of podcasts and TV episodes. Our shows cover a wide variety of topics. Whether you're waking up with us, carrying us through the day, and taking us to bed with you, we're always here for you to enjoy. We're easy to find. Just search for Inspired Choices Network in the Apple App Store or Google Play Store. This is the Heal Your Body Show with Jamie Gilliam. To participate in this program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at inspiredchoicesnetwork.com. You can also send an email to jamie at jgwellnessclinic.com. Now back to the program. Wow, this is this show has been so enlightening and it's it's only show number one. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm like, what is she going to teach us going forward? This has been so jam-packed. I really would love for you to kind of give us more of an idea. You're saying that there's 12 different body systems within each individual's body. Can you give us a little bit more around that? So you have your skeletal system and your muscular system. And then you've got your nervous system, your circulatory system, your respiratory system, your endocrine system, and reproductive system. You also have your, well, I already said circulatory, um, integumentary system, and also your lymphatic system. Some people will um, combine lymphatic with immune system, but we, we look at them separately. So lymphatic and then immune system, your urinary system, and that's it. Wow. Wow. Yeah, it's a lot. And, and so what you do at your clinic is you're looking at all of these systems, what's going on and then how they integrate and, and maybe fight with each other or the, where they're not processing together. So when, when we look at lab work, it's important to not look at labs by one line item at a time. We want to look at all of the labs combined, and then we want to connect the dots uh, because there are connections. For example, most people with hypothyroidism who are not properly treated, they will struggle with high cholesterol, specifically high LDL. And this is a sign of inflammation. Your thyroid hormones are part of the process of HDL being, to, being able to clear LDL. And also many people with hypothyroidism will have an elevated A1C, meaning they are struggling with insulin resistance, or it has progressed to prediabetes or type two diabetes, uh, which also goes, that's basically a three month blood sugar average. So their fasting glucose will be high. Their fasting insulin will be high. They often have fatty liver and often will have hormonal imbalances and some will have systemic infection because of the lack of thyroid hormone. And they also will have vitamin and mineral deficiencies. And this is something that people don't recognize is it's never just the thyroid. And when you have any type of disease, it is never just the diagnosis uh, because we have to look at the whole body. And in evaluating the whole body, that means also evaluating you everything about you, 
We have to know history. We have to know any big trauma. If you suffered tremendous grief, um, especially when we're talking about autoimmune uh, grief, trauma, exposure to toxins and chemicals, like many people with mold toxicity have thyroid issues. So we have to look at the person as a whole being. For example, you don't take your car to a mechanic and you say, hey, there's something wrong with my car. And they just check to see if there's gas in it and say, oh, you're good, right? They're going to do a thorough check of the vehicle. And that's just not what is what is going on in conventional medicine today. Wow. So when someone comes to you, and I mean, you have vast amount of knowledge, where do you typically start them? If, let's say they're just, they have moderate symptoms of tiredness or, you know, foggy brain or whatever. Do you send them for a, a wide range of labs? Is that stage one or step one? That's step one. Uh, an intake with a lot of history, medications, supplements, and just information about them and their stress, their sleep, nutrition, exercise, those things matter as well. And then I send them for a full thyroid panel, full hormone panel, vitamin and mineral testing, a CBC, CMP lipid panel, inflammatory markers, an ANA screen, which is an autoimmune screen for mixed connective tissue disease, and also an Epstein-Barr screen. Those are really the basics. And sometimes we look for other infection because infection will show up in a CBC, but not always. So if somebody has symptoms of Lyme, I'm going to test Lyme. There's a lot of tests outside of that, but those are the basics. Wow. That doesn't sound like basics. That sounds like a lot. How for the for the first time patient coming in, how overwhelmed do they feel by by all of this? I think sometimes when we're going over labs, people are in shock at what is in their lab work because some people will have red all over their labs, meaning for conventional medicine, their labs are abnormal. And that's because, like I said, if you have one problem, it causes a domino effect of problems, which is going to show up in your lab work. And it really comes down to explaining to people that we, we can absolutely treat root cause, right? And if you've been sick for a very long time, I don't think that it's overwhelming when you actually have answers when for so long you've been right. told you're, you're fine, your labs are normal. And so there's a relief and then it's important when working with people not to overload them because if their lifestyle is not dialed in, right? If their nutrition needs work, if they're not moving their bodies, if they're not sleeping well, not managing stress, you can't just say, here, do all of these things. It's right. a step-by-step -step process. Wow. That that yeah, I mean, I can I can only imagine when when someone comes to you that they're like, holy moly, especially when we've been used to going in, getting our labs done. No, you're good. No, you're good. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think? Have you ever imagined what the numbers really are that the people that are being told, yeah, you're good, but they're not? I think that if somebody says, I do not feel good, something is wrong that is enough to warrant investigation. And in healthcare, this is how I work with my patients. And I think this should be the standard across the board. We do not stop until we have answers and you feel good. Mm -hmm. And that is so important because people need ongoing support and they need to know that you have their back and that you're going to help them. And some people, it is a lot of work, especially when dealing with chronic illness. And that typically stems from a place of stress and a dysregulated nervous system. So we have to be able to manage stress, regulate the nervous system, and that can be difficult. And somebody may still be saying, I think something's wrong within my lab work, but we have fixed everything in the lab work. Now we have to work on the nervous system. But I don't think I don't think that as a society, when people say, I don't feel good, and especially as they start incorporating lifestyle things, if they need to change their lifestyle habits, and they're still not feeling good, 
something is wrong and not everything shows up in labs because there's a lot of things just like thyroid cancer that doesn't show up in lab work. And it doesn't mean just because your labs are normal that you're fine. Right. That's scary. That's scary to think that the, it, there's so much that we aren't aware of. How much are people being told you're you're fine and then they're like, okay, well, maybe it's all in my head and they're ignoring how they feel, th- you know, criticizing themselves, putting themselves down or maybe even a partner or friend saying, well, the doctor told you you were fine. So it's all in your head. So with my thyroid cancer symptoms, I felt like I was going crazy and my husband is an amazing man and has been so supportive through all of this. I could not have done all of this without him, but I felt like he kind of had that same feeling. Well, this doctor is saying it's anxiety and, you know, it, it starts really causing you to think you're losing your mind. And the reality is autoimmune diseases go undiagnosed sometimes for decades because primary care providers do not run basic screens that then would lead them to send somebody to a rheumatologist uh, or other specialists, right? And then hypothyroidism, 60% of cases are undiagnosed, meaning they're not getting treated. And then of the people who do have hypothyroidism, the majority are under medicated because they're on T4 only, they're not getting full thyroid panels, and they don't have optimal thyroid panels for somebody on meds. So this is why it's so important to empower yourself with knowledge, to you step up and say, I am going to take charge of my health. And I will say this too, not everything can be healed, right? Not everything, you know, people get cancer and not everybody survives, but you can absolutely live an amazing life while battling cancer and it doesn't have to define you. That is something that I learned from an amazing mindset coach. His name is Matthew Pates and he has been my mindset coach for many years now. And he taught me that, that no circumstance, no diagnosis defines you. Cancer is not who I am. Autoimmune disease is not who I am. And I'm just somebody who has battled those things, but I did not let it, let those things take me down because I chose that I was going to fight to have the life that I want to have. And that's what everybody has the right to do. That's fantastic. So I'm guessing, Jamie, in addition to all of this medical support and guidance, you are also supporting the individual psychologically. Yes. So I am not an expert in mindset or therapy, but I partner with Matthew and I also have other therapists and different specialists in my network who I can refer out when people need more specialized support. Oh, that's fantastic. So what's the first thing that somebody does if they're questioning? Do they just reach out, check your website out, set up an appointment with you, an email? What, what, What would you suggest? Yes. So people can go to my website, jgwellnessclinic.com. Uh, if you type in JG Wellness without the clinic, apparently it goes to Jerry Garcia's website. <laughs> He's JG Wellness. So funny. Um, But yes, you can go there and you can book a consult. It's $25 to do a Zoom consult. You can forward any current labs and you fill out uh, an intake form. And then I'm able to get some information to determine uh, what is going on and and what tests do you need to, to dive deeper into getting a correct diagnosis. And then we treat. So I go over labs with everybody. This is something Something else that is important. Your provider should go over your labs with you. I go over labs on screen, line by line. I explain what I'm seeing in the lab work, connect the dots, write an overview. It generates a functional report. So people aren't just trusting me to say, oh, you're fine, or this is what's going on. But 
I sit down and explain what's happening in the body. And then from there, we develop a treatment plan that is holistic. And also if somebody needs medication or hormone replacement therapy, we're able to do that as well. That's fantastic. Oh my gosh. Well, I can't believe it, but we're up to our final break of the show. So everyone stick around. We're going to wrap up this show with Jamie. We're going to hear about upcoming shows as well. And, um, oh my gosh, like you've shared so much with us just today alone. It's, it's really mind blowing. And I'm super grateful for all your intelligence and all your experience that you've brought to the network. And I know that there are other people in the chat room right now that are blown away as well. So everyone, you are listening to the heal your body show with Jamie Gilliam on the inspired choices network. We will be back right after this short commercial break. Healing your body goes beyond simply taking medication to alleviate symptoms. While medications have their place in healthcare and can be essential in managing certain conditions, healing involves total body care. While not all health conditions can be healed, symptoms can be managed with the right approach. Integrative medicine considers not only the physical body, but also your mind and soul. Instead of just surviving, why not feel amazing and actually thrive? Integrative medicine practitioner Jamie Gilliam empowers you with tools to do just that. Tune into the Heal Your Body show Mondays at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. This is the Heal Your Body show with Jamie Gilliam. To participate in this program, join the live studio audience in our chat room at InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. You can also send an email to jamie at jgwellnessclinic.com. Now back to the program. Oh my gosh, this has been such an eye-opening show and it's been such a quick show. You have downloaded probably more information than the average person has, has learned in maybe their entire life, 40 or 50 years of understanding their body and how their systems work together. This is invaluable information, Jamie. I am so thrilled that you're here. And I can't imagine how much more you're going to be educating us going forward, but I know that you are. What is next week's show? So you're going to be live every single Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 3 p.m. Central, 4 p.m. Mountain, 5 p.m. Pacific on the Inspired Choices Network. And of course, check out our um, free smartphone app. Just search Inspired Choices Network in your app store. You can be listening live or you can be listening to all of Jamie's shows um, all on demand. And of course, you can connect all over social media. You'll see her show there and her talking about all of it. But Jamie, what do you have coming up for us next week on your show? Causes and treatment or the causes of hypothyroidism and treatment. Wow. So and we'll dive into the different the different causes and then proper treatment protocols for hypothyroidism based on cause. Yeah, I'd really like to learn more about what it really is. I mean, it's a difficult word to pronounce. <laughs> and and I'm sure there's a great deal to it that we're not. We're not being exposed to it. I mean, unfortunately, we're learning about these things um, in difficult situations, whether it's ourselves or it's someone else close to us. And otherwise, I think a lot of people, and you would know this better than me, but I think a lot of people just kind of like, yeah, I don't need to pay attention to that because if I don't pay attention to it, it's not going to show up in my world, right? And we really need to learn so much more to be maybe ahead of the game when it comes to situations coming up. Well, absolutely. I think we have to do a lot of preventative care and we have to be one step ahead always because just like I was, I was just cruising through life and then bam, they diagnosed me. And then I just kept being diagnosed with things because then I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's and lupus and those are currently in remission. Um, but 25% of us who don't have thyroids can still struggle with Hashimoto's. Many people don't know that. And then I was diagnosed with lupus. I actually have optic nerve damage in one eye from lupus. 
And, you know, a lot of the work that I've done, I've been able to get to where I'm symptom free and I'm on holistic care uh, for Hashimoto's and lupus. But when it comes to hypothyroidism, the average weight gain at onset is 29 pounds. Many people don't recognize that, but it's not just about your weight. It's about everything going on within the body. And I just saw a post today where somebody posted about hypothyroidism and how much it sucks. And then all of the comments underneath it were, yes, it sucks, sucks, sucks. Nobody understands. And I'm like, hey, it doesn't have to suck. You absolutely can feel good. You can feel amazing. You just need the right treatment. Right. And that's so true about so many things is that we need, we need to be informed, we need to be educated, and we need the tools and understand how these things can really contribute to us. And that's what you and your team are for. So how long have you been doing this, Jamie? Like, when did you first get thyroid cancer? So my husband and I owned a gym and we owned a gym for seven years and I developed thyroid cancer in 2019 and Mm -hmm. then was diagnosed late 2019. So I imagine I developed it. It it probably typically grows for years or even a decade, right? Mm -hmm. Um, So probably really the symptoms started in 2018 and then I was diagnosed in 2019 and I transitioned into healthcare and went back to school and uh, did two different uh, certification programs and then went back for my PhD in integrative medicine. Um, So it kind of landed me here. And honestly, I was just trying to help myself and had no idea that I would be helping so many people struggling with their health and wellness because Mm. I used to think it was just nutrition and exercise, right? Like that's what we're taught in the fitness industry. And I'm so thankful that I was able uh, to go down this path to understand that your health and your body composition, your body weight is not just about nutrition and exercise. It's such a big misconception. That is such a breath of fresh air. There's so much judgment out there of people saying, well, you should just do this. Well, if you just did that. And it, you know, it, what I've seen it develop in people is, you know, this, this place where they're judging themselves and criticizing themselves and then extremes of people doing extreme workouts, extreme dieting, uh, which I would suspect creates a lot of chaos in the body as well. Yes, it absolutely does. And I can share my story on that as well, because I suffered most of my life with over-exercising an eating disorder, addiction to diet pills and laxatives. My whole world revolved around trying to stay super lean. And that also was just stress to my body. Stress to our bodies, which then brings us back to probably more issues in the body. That is, it's crazy. And it's, it's high time that we became empowered with this knowledge. And it's, it's high time that we really moved in the direction of listening to our bodies and, and really knowing that we know what the hell is going on and where there's a problem. Right. We're given intuition and I think most people ignore it and turn it off and your body is constantly telling you things. It's giving you information. Symptoms are just your body saying something's not right. And we just have to first love ourselves and know that we deserve our time, attention, effort, just as much as we give it to everybody else and give ourselves respect. And, and then from there, listen to what our bodies are telling us because our bodies are amazing and, and we are capable of amazing things. Our bodies are capable, are capable of amazing things and we should appreciate our bodies, right? Um, because our bodies do so much for us, but we typically, uh, talk to ourselves in such a negative way, especially as women about our bodies. And we should really appreciate all that they do and, and beauty, success, uh, confidence, None of that is about size. And that's another huge problem. I'll do a podcast about that as well, that, you know, your size, it doesn't define you either. There's so much more to life than your dress size or your number on the scale. Yeah. Wow. 
Wow. We are closing out the show now, Jamie. It, this has been fantastic. I am so grateful that you're here. I speak on behalf of the entire team here at the Inspire Choices Network. We're thrilled to have you. And I know our listeners are going to be over the moon. So guys, you have to come back next week. Heal your body with Jamie Gilliam, the brilliant Jamie Gilliam, who is going to be bringing more and more. So we'll see everybody next week. Bye for now, everybody. Bye, Jamie. Bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to the Heal Your Body Show. Jamie Gilliam returns Monday at 2 p.m. Eastern, 1 p.m. Central, 12 p.m. Mountain, and 11 a.m. Pacific on InspiredChoicesNetwork.com. Until then, give your body the time and attention it deserves to unlock the power you have to heal your body.